Okay then, so what we're going to come to now is a bit of a bit of panel lining. Uh, I've got a series of pens here. These four are um, Indian ink artist pens, and these are just uni pin pens that I like to use. I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and they uh, gradually go up to. Uh, something akin to a, a felt tip pen and that's for doing the larger areas instead of just getting your pen your little one and repeatedly going over it you can just use a broader pen to do it in one stroke now the problem with well it's not so much of a problem it can be a bit of a pain in the bum is that because what you've sprayed out of the top of there to protect it is um, uh, enamel based and these are water slash acrylic based what you'll probably find is that you'll have to go around them a couple of times just to make sure that the panel lines really stick out so um, I'll zoom us in now and uh, we'll make a start So that's uh, the left hand side of the sh back side of the shield has all been panel lined and the, the right hand side has been left uh, unpanel lined so you can see what an effect panel lining has. It does give it more depth and more detail and it well it picks out the detail and uh, so I'll, I'll finish the rest of this off and uh, we'll come back and review it all together. And now uh, that's 100% complete, all the panel lining's done. It only took a few minutes but you can see what an effect panel lining has. Um, I like it more so than a wash in certain cases, especially in this case, because you can see the reflectiveness of the um, the metals there. And once it's on the back of the shield, uh, once the shield's complete and this is at the back, it'll look great. So uh, we're going to put this away and we're going to move on to the front part of the shield and we're going to start washing. Well, we've got round to the stage now where we can put a wash on this. I'm going to be using. Um, the panel line accent colour by Tamiya uh, but I'm not going to be using the brush that's inside I'll just show you this brush it's not it's not the greatest of brushes there you go I'm not going to be using that I'm going to be using the um, nice thin brush and it's the one of the army painter insane detail brushes you know it's a nice little brush so this is a really easy easy stage just um, take the lid off so load up the brush look where we want to put it and just dab and it should very hard for you to see but and I do apologize so we can get it here and it runs off into the recesses and it creates a contrast between the black and um, see doing its thing now you, the more the more you the more you apply the easier it is for you to see and uh, like I said uh, the uh, well rubbish the clear coat that I've used is the uh, model master clear coat uh, for metalizer <laughs> right then got a little problem there so instead of um, if you haven't got any cotton buds by the way that there is just a pair of reverse tweezers with a bit of cotton wrapped in it and we're just going to 
wipe it away and it's done so what I'll do I'll, uh, I'll do the rest of this I'll sp speed this up a little so you can see what's going on there's a little bit much there but you know I don't mind that soon sort it out Hopefully you can see that a little bit now. Just touch and flow. Off it goes. So what we've um, got here is a, a piece of cotton. I was on about using the reverse tweezers because it's time to do the clean up now. So um, just use the uh, reverse tweezers and the, all this does, it will give you a, a more precise tip over a, a regular size cotton bud or Q-tip, whatever you call it. So that's what we're looking for. Right, so we'll just moisten the very end in a bit of this uh, IK Interactive um, white spirit and uh, the reason why I'm using this it's um, it will remove the excess wash but it won't eat away at the, um, the clear coat sand which is not as hot as a regular white spirit Let's just get this nice and tight so we can use it more precisely there you go and then we just drag it over And we just remove all those little bits, a few splashes. And um, don't worry if it's looking a bit untidy and if it's scraggly. We're going to uh, be putting a, once 
I've put the decals on this piece, it's going to get re-coated with clear coat anyway and that will um, hide any imperfections that you may have caused during this part of the process. So nearly there. There was only a few minor little bits that we had to take care of. It's easy enough to do. Um, but it is a, a very subtle wash. You might not, because the light's uh, bright on my desk, you might not be picking it up, but I can certainly see what effect that it's had on the piece. It really has uh, brought out those panel lines. It's made up very nice indeed, giving good contrast. Right, so that's that part done. Let's bring these down. I've got some other parts that I've done off camera, and hopefully you should be able to see see them. So we did the uh, side of the beam shot rifle again as, as, as it's bright you're having a uh, great trouble seeing it but they turned out all right. Um, the uh, beam axe um, parts they were they turned out quite nice as well and uh, and that's pretty much it. So these parts are, are getting nicely dry as well now. I'll put some panel lining just in, inside these recesses and um, we'll start, assemb I'll assemble the weapon first and then it's decal time I think for the weapons and the rest of the shield. So until then, I'll be with you in a bit. Right then, all these uh, parts have been panel lined and washed and now they're ready for the decals. Uh, things you're gonna need, the part that you're gonna decal, the decals, the instructions on where to put the decals, uh, some plain water, something to put the water in, you don't need a lot, a brush to uh, position, help position your decal and apply any uh, setting solutions, some scissors uh, to cut the part out, uh, the decal out or a knife, that helps position as well, cotton wool bud to help flatten it down or a sponge to help um, you conform the decal better to the shape that it's on. So uh, it's a really easy process and as long as um, your part is got a nice gloss finish on it, you shouldn't have any silvering. Now silvering is, uh, if this was a, say a matte uh, varnish, you'd get small pockets of air trapped underneath the decal, which would um, create a void, like a little cavity, and you can see the air bubbles at the end and it's not very nice. And you do have to do a lot of uh, prodding and um, uh, reapplying uh, solutions and stuff to try and get rid of it so it's just so easy uh, if you already have a gloss coat applied to the piece so um, let's cut away and get on with some deckling.
Now, if you look closely, you can just see a little bit of the uh, the crinkling, and that's the microsol doing its job, um, softening the deckle and taking out all that silver in. You can just see it near the base of the crest. There you go. Now we've got to the stage where all these red parts have had their um, satin varnish, so it's like a nice little sheen to it, and it's done wonders for the uh, the. Um, uh, the decals look, uh, it really just hide the edges of the decals and the, what they've been painted on but as you can see down there um, this here needs to be painted uh, the duralanium now I could do it one or two ways uh, put a big piece of masking tape there get a knife, well get a cocktail stick first go around the um, go around the edges pushing the uh, masking tape down until it conforms and then go around with the knife cut it out and then spray but I don't want to do it like that because what's going to happen is you'll um, cut through the masking tape and you'll leave a scar in the paintwork that you've done and probably down as far as the plastic so we're going to take our time and we're going to use the selection of tapes that we've got here they're just the tummy ones and I think these are jammy dog tapes and um, we're just going to take our time and we're going to mask off all this area here and then we're going to um, spray the duralanium and that will be all the paintwork on the shield done and then it will just be an assembly and I'll show you and we'll recap what we've done. The masking's complete now, all it is is leaving these areas um, exposed so I can paint them with duralanium. Um, it does take a little longer to do rather than like I said putting it one piece over uh, sorting out the demarcation lines and then cutting them out with a knife but you're going to get a better result hands down you're not going to be left with any scars or anything like that so uh, I'm going to spray this now and uh, when I come back the shield will be together and we'll look at it so here it is, here's the shield fully complete now, fully decalled um, you can see the bottom part there where I uh, masked up and painted I'll put a bit of panel lining on that um, what else did we do? Uh, the back side of the shield, uh, the B Max is in there. Um, uh, so what did we do? Let's recap. Well we started off by separating the parts from the sprue and making sure they were clean properly and um, ready to accept the uh, the primer. And uh, after they were primed, um, which I used the polyurethane primer from Vallejo, I then um, pre-shaded them. Now for this one I used a complementary pre-shade, I, like I said I used the, uh, my own mix of primer which is the pink stuff and I, and I used a couple of colours of red, a slightly darker red for the pre-shade on these parts as opposed to these parts and then we went in with our first layer of paint and uh, we did it in such a way that we could still see a small amount of the pre-shade coming through and uh, then with all these paints, all these reds, we mixed with a bit of uh, Vallejo orange and then we highlighted them. From there you uh, simply put your gloss coat on, follow it up with some decals, then uh, after it's decaled make sure everything gets a satin coat to seal those decals down and uh, the change, change the contrast in the shield as well. And uh, as you can see it'll look great once it's on the Sazabe. So, what's coming up next? Um, I will be doing a Gerardoga and uh, that's um, obviously a grunt suit from uh, Charles Counter Attack. It was the one that my wife and daughter brought me last Christmas, but I'm just about to get around to it and I'm going to do that as a ground type, I suppose. You know, a lot weathered and uh, you know, chipping and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'll be getting a few working progresses out to you, well, as soon as I can about that. I've got some other things I want to take care of first. So, I hope this uh, series of videos has been helpful in some way to you, and that you might take something from it. I'm not saying it's the, the be-all and end-all, and um, I really do um, think that using just some of these processes can help you be a better modeler. So, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you soon.